Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is Fist Two Five coming back at you for another ship review. This time, something a little bit different. We're doing an alien ship once again of the Asperia line, and this time, it's one of the Van Duel ships, one of the killers of humanity. It's the Asperia Lane. March 2946, the Van Duel launched devastating attacks on the Uriel system, killing thousands. Their kingship leaving mass murder and destruction in its wake. This was just one of the most recent Van Duel attacks across the Empire. Enter the Blade, a light scout skirmisher spacecraft built and employed by the Van Duel. It was first seen in 2681 in the Orion system. It doesn't quite pack the same punch as its cousins, the Scythe or the Glaive, but what it lacks in firepower, it makes up for in agility. It is well known to take out communication systems and to chase down fleeing ships on the battlefield due to its fantastic speed. The king ship can fit hundreds of these small fighters in its hangars, ready to unleash swarms of these deadly weapons upon humankind. Asperia. They're the ones who reverse engineered the blade after nearly a quarter millennium of war against the Van Duel. They manufactured huge numbers of these ships from 2930 to 2940 in an effort for human pilots to train against these ships and learn how to effectively beat the Vanduul Swarm. The Navy now trains against Asperia's Scythe and Glaive replicas, returning all of the blades back to the factory. CEO Charlotte Hussian of Asperia, in an effort to bolster the defense of the UEE, released the blade for civilian purchase, with the hope of benefiting the whole empire, and to give those Van Duel monsters a black eye or two in the process. So now you too can purchase and own an Asperia Blade, the recreation of the light Van Duel fighter for your own fleet and defense of your own pocket of space. The Blade has actually been around Star Citizen for quite a while now. It debuted in 2018 in Patch Alpha 3.2. The original concept was one size 1 gun and two size 2 guns, along with missiles. It was the Vandal equivalent of the Aegis Gladius, which as we all know is the star of Squadron 42. Today, the blade has come into its own. It employs four bespoke guns in total, two fixed size 3 Warlord plasma cannons just in back of the canopy, and two fixed size 2 Wasp laser repeaters on the inboard of its U-shaped wing. That's one more gun than the Gladius, but hey, who's counting? It does also carry two missile racks, that hold four Arrow 1 missiles each, for a total of eight. Again, more than the Gladius, but to be fair, also less powerful. Asperia has also juiced up their replica with military C-grade all-stop shields, a military charger power plant, and competition class coolers. All in all, almost the same statistics as all of the Gladius parts, with a key difference being the quantum drive. The Gladius has a military quantum drive, so it is significantly faster than the Blade. The Asperia Blade comes with a civilian grade C Rush quantum drive, which while it is about 100,000 kilometers a second slower, it does go further, letting you go 20 million kilometers further uh, with a full tank of quantum fuel. 
So you have that efficiency and economy versus the flat-out speed of the short-range Gladius. It's also half the weight of the Gladius, despite being smaller in dimensions. It's got a faster SCM speed and a faster top speed. And while it doesn't accelerate as fast as the Gladius, it's more nimble. Well, it's more nimble side to side, and it has four times better deceleration. Head to head, the Blade and the Gladius are both phenomenal ships, but which one is better? I think it's time to find out. Let's suit up and get at it. Let's go. So here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the Asperia Blade. We are warily sitting out here at Security Post Korea, hoping nobody flies by and tries to blow it up while we're taking a look around. As you can see from the front look, it does have a very uh, U-shaped type of blade or chassis frame. Um, when we get it up in space, you're going to see it looks a little bit like uh, a bat wing, pretty much. Right now, the wings are technically folded in, and it doesn't really sit on any type of landing gear, but it is there, um, apparently, according to CIG. But we don't see anything. As we walk towards the front, that is the cockpit straight ahead of us. Uh, we're going to get in there in a minute. It is a single seat fighter. And uh, over here on the starboard side, which mimics the port side, are our two guns. On the interior of the ship behind the canopy there are the, the main guns. Those are the size threes. Those are the Warlord plasma cannons. And plasma, by the way, is supposed to do damage over time. It's supposed to kind of stick to the hull of a ship and kind of it does damage. And then as it burns through, it would do more damage. And then over here on the the other weapon uh, mounted kind of to the wing there it, by the scissor joint is the uh, wasp size two laser repeater. Uh, Vandal weapon technology is much greater than our own, uh, than the humanity's own. They are a little bit ahead in that department. As you can see on the port side, it is also the same. The ship is actually symmetrical as we clip through, as we walk around. I, I'm not sure what kind of the purpose is of the rest of this part of the ship or why it's shaped this way. It does look extremely cool. I, I do like the red accents. Uh, red being my favorite color here. I, I, I like how the band do will kind of do that. Um, one thing you will notice, and we'll get more detail in space here, is that these these parts here are kind of like a rib cage. And that only happens when the landing gear goes down. When the landing gear goes up, those ribs come in and protect what I can only guess is the lifeblood or the, the heart of the Asperia Blade. So, let's go around to the back of the ship. And we will see there is some engine power here. There's three engines, two main engines, and then uh, a smaller engine on top. And they all combine to actually have a pretty darn good uh, speed. Uh, it is a light fighter, though. And there are these sections here, which I don't quite know what they do. But interesting nonetheless. And uh, really, there's not that much more to it. Let's go into first person mode. And uh, we will see that there's only one way to get into the blade, and that is right here in this section. 
That's, that's that's how you get into the blade. You go to the pilot seat. As far as I know, there are no other ways, uh, no other parts on the outside to mess with. No weapon space, nothing like that. It is a fairly old design ship coming back to 3.2. So we're going to enter the pilot seat just like this. As you can see, we're going to grab the controls. We're going to get ferried right up into the ship. From here, inside the cockpit, let's take a look around. You can see we have two controls, so it's kind of like a, a HOSAS setup here. To the right is our exit button, to the left is a power off switch. And there's not that much to it, to be honest with you. Engine on, engine off. Let's go ahead and turn the engine off. Oh, yeah, you can see we're floating now. One thing to notice is that the HUD is completely red. Everything is red. Uh, the radar, you're not going to really see it unless you have a, like a Toby or you can track your vision. You just have to kind of look down to see that radar. Also, the screens are just high enough to, to kind of see in their full or multifunction displays, power, shields, target, and ship status. Everything else is pretty standard. One thing, uh, there is even the compass up there. One thing I don't like is over here on when you uh, take your speed up and down, you notice there is no SCM marker because on normal ships, it's actually red. And on this ship, the ship is all red. Also over here in the VTOL coupled gear, landing gear, I'm going to turn on VTOL. You're going to see it just change to bright red. That's about all you get. So just pay attention to that, I would say. Um, looking up around the cockpit, you do have a little bit of a sunroof here where you can see space. There are some other ports you can see around as well, but your main visibility has these, these two large struts there. And so that's about it. Um, let's, uh, oh, you can see we're already moving, even though our landing gear is supposed to be down. Let's, uh, take her out for a spin. What do you guys say? Okay. So let's raise up a little bit. See if we can get out of the shadow here. We're going to go ahead and uh, supposedly tuck the landing gear in. As you can see, the wings opened up on that scissor joint. And those blade spikes right there, they also opened up. Let's clear the station a little bit. It does have a really nice sound to it. And we will roll over. I want to show you those... Uh, rib joints here with the landing gear as we put our landing gear down you can see those ribs kind of open up i'm not sure what the point of that is maybe that's some kind of weird repair or docking thing but when you uh when you do close the landing gear not only do those ribs close but these little blades here on top of the ship uh notice it's called the blade those little spikes here, they stick out. So that is something super cool. All right, so let's test its flight characteristics. So I'm going to head at SCM speed right now. Look how fast it got up to SCM. Let, let, me, let me take it out of SCM real quick. I mean, it is a really quick ship. So... Let's, we're at zero and go. And boom, just like that, we're at 213 SCU. I'm sorry, uh, meters a second. Let's crank it all the way up to the top. Now, this is a zero G as well, folks, so keep that in mind. And without using boost, we get to its max speed of about 1237, maybe 1238. Um really quickly actually <laughs> so uh i'm gonna go ahead and come back down and we'll see we'll see the retro thrusters fire there's that retro thruster right there in the center of the ship and we'll go ahead and check out the engines while we're at it we'll go back up 
So there's the engines. Nice flame coming out. Some afterburner right there. The aesthetic of the ship is, for lack of a better word, just beautiful. All right. So let's take it into a planet or a moon and let's check out the atmospheric flight. Selling just happens to be nearby. Let's see how, how fast we can roll over to Galette Family Farms. All right, here we go. Okay. So here we are at SCM speed. It looks like it's moving very slow. But in actuality, it's doing 212 meters a second, which is rather fast, but not quite fast enough. Let's ramp it up and see what this thing can do in the moon's atmosphere. Coming around this mountain. It's resisting. Turn a little bit, but it's not too bad. It likes to pull up. I kind of want to. I kind of want to call that oversteer a little bit, but uh, let's see what kind of SCM we can actually get up to here. Looks like we're floating around about 750 right now. That's really fast. Passing 800. So this thing is really moving. I'm going to crank it back a little bit. So those engines are powerful for sure. Let's have it take a right turn. There's not a whole lot of lore out there for, you know, Van Duel uh, engine technology and if it's better than human technology. But it feels like any other human ship. Maybe that's a testament to Asperia. Right. I think that's enough of the the test drive on uh, Selen. Let's uh, see if we can find a combat combat mission and uh, see how it handles some dogfighting. All right, I think our target's dead ahead. The ship does have missiles, so let's see how they do. They are size one, so let's get a little space between us. There we go. There's one. Let's load up two missiles. It, it doesn't handle as well as I thought it would in atmosphere.
All right, let's let's switch over to guns. These missiles do not want to let go of this ship. I will tell you that much. Inbound, inbound. And I am facing a Gladius, which is the main competitor for for this ship. And I'm at default uh, capacitor. Woohoo! I can tell I did some damage there. He is losing his shields a little bit. Definitely jousting me. I'm not used to the fixed guns. I'm gonna fight with so many gum. Oh! There he goes. All right. Where's your buddy at? Of course, it's an M50. Oh, he's not happy. Took out his uh, shields pretty quick. We're in the circle of death. Taking longer than I thought to pick out this M50. Ooh, there he goes. All right, mission complete. All right, with some graphic artifacts still on our screen, like collision alerts. That was pretty fun. That was a low risk mission, so, you know. Higher risk missions, I would definitely need to use more missiles for sure. Shall we see how she does in a space dogfight mission? Oh, yeah. All right, we have some bounties in this asteroid field. Let's go get them. Missiles away. It's a Gladius. All right, I bumped up the guns. I just got smashed into. <laughs> Looks like we're still in one piece, though. Where's his friend? I see you up there. Uh, Mustang Delta. Easy pickings. So just to show everybody, here's an even capacitor. The Warlords at 17, Waspus at 26. I was using a 67% guns, Warlord 19, Wasp 28, max guns, Warlord 21, Wasp 31. And uh, apparently I did take some damage. Over here on the, the left blade, wing, whatever there, uh, it did take a little damage. So, you know, it happens. Uh, but I ran into my dead target, so 
We can head back to Port Alisar for some repairs. And now we're going to send you over to the loadout section. Thanks for watching. All right, boys and girls, it is time to go over the loadout section for the Asperia Blade. We're going to start with the 317.1 version, um, even though the video is for 317.2. Um, but we're, I just want to start here as kind of a point of reference. Um, you can see right now it has it has 673 DPS, uh, 380 alpha damage. Um, missiles doing 18,000. The uh, size one shields. Um, military grade C, all stops, 3,000 hit points. Power is just above half, so not great. Coolers at 139 out of 460, so those are fine. Pretty high EM at 10,000, pretty high IR at 14,000, so don't expect stealth. This is this is an attack ship. We can see it's a light fighter, uh, combat size 2, crew of 1, of course. Um, Zero SCU, if you <laughs> have any notion of storing a box in there. Um, 11,750 hit points. So not that great um, in hit points. If you compare it to the Gladius, it is better, though, because the Gladius is 9,969 hit points. So the Blade does have a little bit tougher body than the Gladius. Um, and then we got the mass, uh, which is half of what the Gladius is. This is 27,000. The Gladius is about 51,000. Um, and the speed is just a little bit higher than the Gladius. 214 for the blade, 208 for the Gladius. Um, at max speed, 1238 for the blade, 1236 for the Gladius. Um, the maneuvering, uh, 5555, 198 for pitch yaw and roll. And uh, the Gladius has a roll of 200 and then 55-55 for pitching now. So really on par with uh, the Gladius here. Now, fuel capacity, but we'll have to go into what's in PTU um, for Urkel because it has been changing. So these things, these stats may change by the time the video comes out as well. Um, so I want you to keep in mind these Warlord, uh, the, all these weapons are fixed. Uh, they are bespoke. That's why the lock button's on there. You can't change it. So uh, you basically have two fixed size three plasma cannons, which right now are acting as laser cannons because plasma is not a real thing in the game yet. It doesn't do the damage over time that it's supposed to do. And there is the wasps, which it says laser cannon, but they're actually laser repeaters. Um, and those are size two. And those are also fixed. Then for shields, all stops, uh, military grade C, not great. Definitely should upgrade those uh, if you're going to do a lot of dogfighting, which is what the ship should be doing. Uh, the power plant, uh, military grade D, I would recommend uh, upgrading that as well. Uh, we'll do that on the other loadout screen. The coolers, I think they're fine. Uh, we don't need to change them. Competition grade Cs. The quantum drive, the rush, civilian grade C, not great. Should be changed. Now... Um, here's the thing. I want to bring up the thrusters because this was one of the major changes from 3.17. Well, pretty, pretty much any version prior to 3.17.2. The, the main thrusters here are 3.75 G's compared to the Gladius. The Gladius is at 5.21 G's. Okay. Th that's for both of the main thrusters. Now, uh, this, because the blade has three engines, there's three main thrusters, right? There's three main engines, and they're all at 3.75. The Gladius only has two engines, and it's at 5.21. So a little bit, even back then, more forward thrust, faster, right? Then all the maneuvering thrusters on here, except for this weird outlier here, uh, are 1.75. So really 1.8 with retro thrusters at four. The Gladius is at 1.13 uh, for for its lateral thrusters, and then it changes to 1.11. So the blade was better anyway, uh, laterally, um, and has much better retro thrusters at 4 Gs versus the Gladius at 1.5 Gs, which is really low. So the Gladius is much slower to slow down the blade. So let's go up and actually change 
<laughs> change screens here. Okay, so now we're on the PTU version of the Asperia Blade. Um, now, this is, again, subject to change. Uh, who knows what's going to happen in PTU in the next uh, few days. But the DPS, you'll notice, is down to 507 with stock weapons. The Warlords were the only uh, weapons that changed. Uh, they, they went down to 201 uh, DPS sustained. So keep that in mind. The Alpha stayed the same, right? 380, but the DPS overall changed. The missiles stayed the same. Shields stayed the same. Uh, power plant, all that stuff. All that stuff stayed the same. The whole hit points are now 13,950. Uh, so they're up a little bit. Uh, compared again to the Gladius at 9,969. Um, the mass is the same, speeds are the same, and uh, picture yeah, roll is the same. However, the hydrogen capacity uh, remains the same, which is low at 45,000 um, hydrogen uh, compared to the Gladius, which is at 135,000. So the Gladius can stay out longer uh, using its hydrogen. I mean, that makes sense. Gladys is a little bit longer, maybe a little more room for fuel, even though the blade has these sweeping blades with that do nothing. Maybe those are the fuel tanks. I don't know. Uh, as far as quantum fuel, they're both 583 uh, liters or whatever the measurement is for it. Now, the Warlord cannons to go over them real quick. Um, some of the stuff they did was they just changed the amount of damage they really do. Um, but if you look at the ammunition speed, it's at 1,400 meters a second. Now, I know we didn't look at it on the previous screen, but the Warlord cannons in 317.1 um, are at roughly 700 meters a second. So the ammo speed has been doubled, which is huge, especially for PvP, because now, while you might not be doing as much damage, those those laser shots are getting to your target much faster, so they're much harder to to dodge and avoid, which is a big part of PvP, right? Um, the ammo lifetime uh, is r roughly the same there. The other big change is the ammo range. Um, it, I believe it was right around a thousand, maybe eleven hundred on the on the old blade, the new blade, fifteen forty. So they're faster and they go further, which is a pretty big deal. Um, the Wasp cannons did not change at all. So really, these two size threes, that's what changed the most. Now, as far as missiles go, these two, these have arrow ones, um, which is weird to me why they don't actually have uh, different missiles, but um, whatever. Uh, they're, they're Vanduul missiles, so I guess it makes sense. Esperia puts those on there. I don't like the those. I actually like the cross sections, but uh, it looks like the arrow ones do do the most damage. So, you know, put on whatever missile you like. I tend to go for the Spark 1 or the Pioneer 1. Task Force 1s actually look the best. So do whatever you want with missiles. As far as the shields go, military grade C, the 1500s, uh, you're going to use this as a fighter. That's its point. So I would, I would fully upgrade to FR-66s. That's going to take our shields uh, up to uh, 3450, so a little bit more shields. Uh, our power plant being the charger, I don't know if power plants are going to matter anytime soon, but I would throw a JS-300 on it, military grade A. Um, it takes us down to a little under half, which is better than it was. The coolers I'd leave alone. The quantum drive, uh, I would even throw an Atlas on there or a Voyage. I'm going to go with Voyage because it's a little bit faster. You can still make every jump in the system. I don't know if you can make Mike L2 to something else anymore, because that's now the furthest away. So we'll have to see on that. But um, So before we go over thrusters here, I just want to do this, uh, the cart. So in the cart, we can see the Voyage FR-66 times 2, J-300 Arrow. That's 72,552 Alpha UEC to upgrade. Um, I don't think we can get them all at uh, Grimhex, although Grimhex does have a lot. Orison has those two. Orison. So if you say the Crusader system, you can get everything. Oh, we don't need the arrow ones that come with it. So you can actually go to Orison for all of these things. No, I know no one wants to fly there. 
because it takes a long to get out, but 72,200 if you buy everything at Orison. So now let's go over the last part here. The thrusters. Notice these are higher now. So now the main thruster, and I'm going to compare this with the Gladius again, is at 4.74 Gs uh, thrust capacity, 1.2, what is that, mega newtons, something like that. Anyway, uh, these are higher than they were before. The Gladius is still at 5.21 for its engines, but now the blade is higher with its three engines, all being the same. If you look at the maneuvering, it's now, except for these bottom two, it is now higher at 2.5 Gs or 0.66 mega newtons, where the Gladius is 1.13 or 0.57 mega newtons. So um, 2.5 to 1.13, quite a bit of difference in lateral uh, maneuverability. Um, and the retro thruster, the ability to slow down is at 5.66 G's now, and the Gladius is still at 1.55. So the blade can slow down faster. It can maneuver laterally faster. It's just not as fast to accelerate, even though its SCM and its main uh, or its top speed is technically faster than the Gladius. So it should be a pretty darn fair match, except when you talk about weapons. 507 DPS for the blade. 12, this is stock, 1,258 DPS for the Gladius. Now, any probably real pilot who's going to do PB is not going to keep the Mantis GT220 because it runs out of ammo after 265. So if we just mount uh, Panther 337 hard mounted on there and we have three size threes on the Gladius, it changes its DPS to 540 much more in line with the blade. All the ammo is rechargeable. It's all laser energy based. And so I think they're, the blade might end up being kind of the meta uh, in the future because the Warlord itself, uh, the new ones, 1400 meters a second ammo speed. A Panther 337, 1400 meters a second. Um, Ammo range, 1540 on the 337, 1540 on the Warlord. So extremely even. Do you want to be more agile laterally and be able to stop faster? Or do you want to be able to accelerate a little bit faster with the Gladius? So very evenly matched ships. And there you go, folks. That is the loadout section for the Asperia Blade. And uh, let's move on to the next part of the video. Thank you for watching so far. And roll that footage.
So what? You, oh, hold on. I always forget to take the helmet off. So, uh, what did you guys think about the Asperia Blade? I think it's a pretty interesting ship. Uh, truth be told, I I don't know if it's better than the Gladius, but I I think it's on the right track. With the updates that CIG put in in 3.17.2, it definitely gives it an edge up in agility, and it does have that extra size 3 weapon. So overall, with four weapons, I think it's definitely a contender, and I think it'll be interesting to see what's going to happen in Squadron 42 when we're using the, well, when we're using the Gladys to defeat the Van Tool and the Blade. So that's going to be an interesting predicament when we get there. Overall, I think if you already have a Gladius, I don't think you need the blade. Um, if you don't have either, I would go with whatever you like. The blade has some really neat aesthetic options, meaning it's a Batwing. Uh, it looks like the Batwing. It, well, it flies in space. The Batwing doesn't fly in space. But other than that, it's a Batwing. It, it is pretty cool. I wish it had some of the things that CIG meant for it to have, like uh, when the wings were in, kind of like the Banu Defender, it had a some kind of a better travel mode, or maybe the thrusters worked differently and the weapons didn't work, but that never really happened. Um, I don't particularly love how they didn't change anything with the red, like, I like the red UI on the ship, but I don't like that they didn't change the color on the velocity indicator or on the VTOL and landing gear buttons. No, nothing changed. Like, everything... It's very hard to tell what's what on there. Like, it's hard to tell what SCM speed is and how fast you're going past it. And maybe, maybe different shades of red, like, that you can see would be worth it there. Other than that, I think it's a really good fighter. It, it can be frustrating at times, but so can the Gladius. So that's what I think. What do you guys think about the Asperia Blade? Do you think it's worth uh, the money that it's going for? I mean, it's not cheap. Um, do you think the alien tax on that is worth the price? Uh, do, do, you, do you guys own a blade? Have you used a blade? Do you prefer it over the Gladius? These are the questions I think we need to be asking ourselves as a community and you know, do we want to spend that type of money on a ship when there is a ship just like it? Uh, especially in Star Citizen. So that's it for this video. I hope it was pretty short and sweet enough for you. And uh, if you have any questions please comment in the comments down below. If you are looking for any more adventures of Fisting Jawa you can find us at fistingjava.org, our website. You can check out our Discord, the Sons of Valhalla, which is where we do a lot of our stuff, our streaming uh, links are all there, our, our giveaway stuff is all there. We have an awesome Discord community and some great folks over there. So hop on in, hop into a comm. Someone will probably join you if, if it's nobody's there and uh, enjoy hanging out with the group. We're always looking for new members to the org or just people that want to hang out and have a good time. You can catch us on Thursdays streaming live at YouTube and on uh, Twitch. We do two separate streams, but they are essentially the same stream. You can catch those links in the description below. And uh, as always, remember, if the fist don't get you, the lightning bolt will. From Her L3 and Thundering Express Station, this is Fist25 signing off saying, Good night, Stan. Who is that guy? He just came right into the shop. Like, now he's, his head's jittering. You all right there, buddy? Are you just... No, oh, but what is wrong with you? He must know Chris Roberts. 